Starring Doug Henning. Special guest host, Glenn Campbell. And guest star, Sandy Duncan. Written by Buzz Cohan and Doug Henning. Produced and directed by Walter C. Miller. And just prior to the show, Doug went into the audience and selected two volunteers at random to assist Doug in the next uh, series of illusions. Now, we've never met these people before, which is a way of saying they are not ringers. They will vouch for that. Thank you, Glenn. Tonight, I'd like to take everyone on a journey into a magical reality, a reality where a magician's dreams come true. And at the end of the show, I'm going to try to fulfill one of my wildest dreams, walking through a solid brick wall. Yeah. You could have dreamed, you know, being a cowboy or a fireman like the rest of us. At least that would be in the realm of possibility, Doug. Well, I don't blame you for being skeptical. If, if I'd met you 10 years ago and you told me you were going to sell 20 million records, I would have been skeptical too. But I guess we just have different dreams. Well, we sure do. But I know one thing, that I cannot walk through a brick wall. Don't be too sure. And now after making a motorcycle weigh, what, 700 pounds 700 disappear? Pounds. Wow. Doug thought it would be nice to do some of the smaller stuff as opposed to the large stuff because People like to see small dreams fulfilled, too. Doug Henning, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. Hi, I'm Doug. What's your name? Francie. Francie, how are you? And what's your name? Steve. Francie and Steve, good. Thank you for coming up to assist me here tonight. I'd like to take you all back to the time when I first started out in magic. I was just a kid, and all I had to work with was my empty hands and a few ordinary objects. And I used to perform for my friends sitting around the table. And I'd like you to be my friend sitting around the table tonight, okay? Thank you. Now, in order to do magic, you must develop certain skills with your hands. It's like learning to play the guitar. I have a little saying I kind of keep in my mind. It's that the difficult must become habit, the habit easy, and the easy beautiful. And then it really looks like magic. But first, you have to practice your exercises. And I, I'd like to show you a few exercises that I used to do when I was younger and still do, as a matter of fact. Last year, I did one of the largest illusions in magic. I made a live elephant vanish. And I can't get any larger than that, so this year I decided to do the smallest illusion in magic. An illusion with a little tiny cigarette paper. Watch closely. I'd like the two of you to assist me in a very wonderful illusion with a pack of 52 playing cards. Here are the cards. I'm going to have each one of you select a card, just like this. We'll have it returned to the pack, and I'll mix up the cards, and we'll find your card in a very mysterious way. Would you like to pull out a card, please? Just reach out there and grab one, look at it, and memorize it. Would you take a card, please, and look at your card and memorize it? Now, it's Steve, right? Yes. Yeah, would you also take a card for the audience? Just pull it out and lay it flat on the table in front of me. Fine, it's very important you remember your cards, okay? Now I'm gonna have each card return to the pack. The first card, it's your card, right? Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Yeah. We'll put your card somewhere near the bottom of the pack. That's right about there. Now it's your card, okay? And we'll put your card right down near the side, like that. And the last card is the audience's card. That one right there, and we'll put that one right down there near the bottom, okay? Everybody memorizes their cards and we're all cool. Now I'm gonna mix up the cards and we'll find your card in a, in a most unusual way. I think you'll agree. Now, first of all, let's use the audience's card. I'd like everyone at home just to concentrate on your card. You're, did you see the one I held up for the audience? Yes. What was the name of it? 
ten of spades. The ten of spades. Watch the ten of spades because people think that the mind actually has a power to make physical objects move. And if this were the case, it would look something like this. Watch. <laughs> and the audience's card was the ten of spades. Steve, let's try your card now. Do you remember what it is? Jack of diamonds. The jack of diamonds. Steve's card is a jack of diamonds. Steve, hold up your fingers and wiggle them a little bit. Let's see if we can make the jack of diamonds work. A little bit harder, wiggle, Steve. Yes, yes. You're a very fast wiggler there. It's moving quickly. <laughs> there we go. And look, your card is the jack of diamonds. I'm going to make your card more difficult to find than anyone else. And to show you that nothing is connected to the pack at all, we're going to cover it with this clear plexiglass dome, okay? What is the name of your card? Seven of Diamonds. The Seven of Diamonds. Watch. The seven of diamonds. You can take the cards, put them in your pocket, and keep them as a souvenir, okay? Thank you very much. It's very easy to destroy something like a cigarette paper. You don't feel too bad because it's very inexpensive, but to destroy something like a beautiful silk handkerchief is a little bit more risky. So I'm gonna to try to do an illusion with a silk handkerchief, an illusion of destruction with this handkerchief. Before I do that, we have to find the exact center of the handkerchief. And that exact center is right about there. Now, I'd like you to take the scissors, if you would, please, and cut, excuse me, not cut, create the illusion of cutting, because you wouldn't want to damage this beautiful handkerchief. Create the illusion of cutting right through the center of that handkerchief. Yes, just create the perfect illusion of cutting right through the handkerchief. Thank you. Put the scissors down now, and I, I think you've created the perfect illusion. Do you see two halves of a handkerchief? Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good illusion because I even see that too. But, you know, the senses can't be trusted. They can be distorted by all kinds of things and they, they don't really give us a true picture of reality. For instance, do you know what? We haven't actually cut this handkerchief at all. You don't believe me? Well, watch. <laughs> Well, I'm really getting warmed up now, folks, so we're going to go for broke here. I have to borrow a gold ring. Do you have a gold ring that I could borrow? Steve, hold your hand right out on the mat, and I'm going to dump into it six Canadian silver dollars. We only need three for the first part of the experiment, so I'll put the rest of them right inside the little bag. Three silver dollars and a gold ring. Now, the gold ring actually has the ability to attract silver, okay? I'd like you to keep your eye on the gold ring in this hand and the three silver dollars in this hand. You'll hear them being attracted. You won't see it. Are you ready? Listen. Did you hear that? Look, one of the coins went right over and attracted to the ring. Now I'm gonna try this with another coin. Did you hear that? The second coin went right, right over. And the last one is the most difficult of all. We got it. Three coins attracted by the gold ring. Now I'm gonna do this once more using three coins at once. This is the most difficult. In this hand goes the ring and three silver dollars, right? In this hand goes three silver dollars. Steve, do you remember what's in that hand? Three silver dollars. That's right. Do you remember what's in the other hand? Three silver dollars in my ring. That's right. Now watch, my hands never approach each other. I just wiggle my thumbs. And it's done. <laughs> you know, during the time that Doug was preparing for the show, well, we got to talking about a lot of things. And one of the things we discussed was a sense of wonder about the world that we live in. Doug was saying that when a child looks at life, he sees the world through innocent eyes, and everything in it seems magical. As we get older, we tend to lose our innocence, and with it, a great deal of the magic. The world is still magical, but sadly enough, we've misplaced the ability to see it. 
But sometimes when all the signs are right, it is possible to rediscover the magic of childhood.
Well, Doug, so far, I'm batting a thousand with you. What do you mean? Well, according to my calculations, what has it done, audience? Uh, ten illusions? I know how to do every one of them except ten. You mean number ten has you stuck? No, I mean all, all ten of them have me stuck, Doug. <laughs> Great! <laughs> I have a hunch that you're going to stick me again. What, what is this one? Well, this is my artist studio. It's... Yeah. Just a frame right now. It's totally empty, and the, the sides of the studio are lying flat here on this platform. My assistants are going to put it together. All right. And I'm going to make a beautiful, magical creation inside pretty soon. Oh, that's right. How do you dream up these illusions? Well, you just really hit on the key, key word, then. I really dream them up. It's just like an artist dreams up his creation. A magician does the same thing. We're very similar. Yeah, but I, I never saw an artist walk through a brick wall. <laughs> you haven't seen me do it yet, either. <laughs> but I will. First, though, I'd like to demonstrate what I mean by this whole illusion. It's called the artist's dream. The premise of the illusion is that the artist follows his dream until it becomes a, an actual physical reality. Mm -hmm. If you follow me now, I'll show you exactly what I mean, okay? Okay. Just as an artist has a studio in which to create, mm -hmm. this is my studio. Yeah. Yeah, but yours is a little small, isn't it? <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> It is pretty small. It's pretty sparsely furnished, too, just this little table. Right. But now I'm going to begin my creation, and I need a little privacy to create. Well, I didn't think you looked like you needed a roommate, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll stand out here, and I'll go try to find the motorcycle or something. Thank you, Glenn. To show you how powerful the mind can be, I'm going to magically create something with my mind, without the use of my hands at all. My hands will be in plain sight throughout the whole illusion, out the front of this cabinet. And to prove to you that nothing can enter or leave this empty cabinet throughout this illusion, we're now going to show you all sides with our handheld camera, both sides and the solid back. Also, this cabinet is sitting on a, a platform about a foot and a half off the ground, and you can see nothing can enter or leave through below. Now I'll begin my work of art. The first thing an artist needs is some raw material. And because I'm a magician, I'm going to produce my raw material magically from my dreams. My raw material for this evening, a simple, formless lump of clay. But watch what happens to it. And now my dream begins to take shape. Since I am a magician, as well as an artist, I'm going to select something for my subject which is very close to every magician's heart. My magical creation... <laughs> Whoops, missed a little bit with the tail there. <laughs> now comes the most important part in a work of art. The moment when an artist breathes life into his creation. I started out with just my empty studio and nothing but a dream. Then I magically produced my raw material, molded it, and shaped it until the creation was ready to be enjoyed by other people. This is a true culmination of an artist's dream, to see his creation come to life when he shares it with the world. And when an artist transforms his dream into reality, he himself becomes transformed. That's just super. That's... <laughs> hey, good. That was a real work of art. And the outfit, the transformation, that's fantastic. You look like the rhinestone magician. <laughs> Have you got anything else to say? Well, I'd, I'm, I'd, I'd be glad to just to 
know that you don't ever make a gorilla in there, you know. Woo, so am I. <laughs> You've been watching the show very close. You've been just standing around the illusions and backstage and watching in a monitor. Is there anything else you'd like to know that I could tell you while we're here? I'd like to know everything, but I'll settle for a little private lesson in magic. You've got yourself a deal. You just have to promise not to tell anybody, okay? I won't. Because this is a very large secret. It's an illusion with a little tiny purple handkerchief and two empty hands. I'm going to show you what it looks like as magic first, okay? Okay. And then we'll get into the heavy secret. I've been trying Watch. to catch him at it all. I slowly push the purple handkerchief into my hand. Now the magical moment. And look. <laughs> the handkerchief becomes ah. a green handkerchief. A little more purple. A little more green. You push the purple all the way in, and I've done a little miracle. Well, uh, I, was, <laughs> I was with you right up to the last part. <laughs> the last step got you, huh? That, the last step done me in. Well, maybe this will explain things a little bit, you know, because in, in magic, Glenn, I take known laws of nature and I hide them so that you can't see them, and that's what makes it look like magic. The law of nature that makes this illusion work is very complicated. It's called the law of the purple <laughs> handkerchief. We learn all about that in science class. I have two handkerchiefs for you here, and you can do this, and first thing you do is you take the purple one, you stick it in your belt. Now, this okay. is what you do in the closet or in a back room before you're gonna do it. And of course, you start with your hands empty, okay? Empty hands. Now, you take Got the it. green handkerchief, and you're hiding it in here. If you're at a party, you're doing this in the back room, and keep your little finger over the edge so people don't think okay. you're doing something sneaky. Okay. You slowly push the green handkerchief right down inside your hand, okay? Right. And you can take the purple one, Right. And you walk out and you're all ready to perform. Now, one thing you must never ever do, Glenn, is never open your hand, because if you do, the whole illusion's ruined, and you have to start from scratch. So just keep your hand closed. No, no, keep your hand closed in a very natural position, just well, like I, that. Okay. Yeah, very natural. Nobody will know the hand. Yeah, stuff it all in there and hold it very naturally, and nobody will know that the handkerchief's there. Okay. Good. You ready to start? I, I'm, if you want to show any hand empty, you can show this one. It has nothing at all oh. to do with the illusion. Now, here we go. We take the purple handkerchief, and we slowly push it into our hands, like that. Okay. Now, your friends are going to be amazed at this. Yeah, I The know magical it. moment, and you turn your hand over, and you pull out the green one. Hey, you'll I You'll be got invited it. to every party. You just push in the purple one a little bit, pull out the green one a little bit, push in a little more purple, little. and then you're all set to go. Yeah, pull it all the way out. Fabulous. And you've done a miracle. <laughs> no tell anyone how to do it, okay? <laughs> now, I think I've been taking it on live television, too, Doug. Well, you're doing real fine. The only part you missed was the part where the handkerchief vanishes. I know. That's like saying, I wrote this great song, but I left out the melody. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? You know, the more I hang around with you, the more I'm rooting for that brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me about the brick wall. I was only kidding, Doug. Well, I want to take both our minds off the brick wall right now and ask you a question. What do you really know about levitation, you know? Well, I know enough to know that it's... Added to my list of things that I just cannot do. <laughs> Maybe not, but you know, Glenn, we all really have the potential to, to levitate, to rise off the ground. Wouldn't you like to float in midair? I'd love to, but I think it defies the, the law of nature, doesn't it? Well, not really. All it really does is tell us that there's some other laws of nature that we don't yet understand because our knowledge is limited. It, it's always limited. There's always a little bit more. It's sort of like thinking about that the magic of today is the science of tomorrow. That's right. Well, are you going to levitate for us tonight? Well, I'm not going to levitate, but I'm going to create a wonderful levitation illusion that will give you some indication of what is in store for all of us in the future. I'm going to levitate Sandy Duncan on the razor-sharp point of one sword. Well, I'll, I'll, I want to see this.
Well, Sandy, how do you like the show tonight? Uh, well, I, I really like it a lot. Uh, I, I have been uh, taken apart, put together, expanded, shrunk, floated, frozen, and stuck in the back. You're a heck of a date, Doug. <laughs> the night is still young. How would you like to walk through a brick wall with me? I would never do that on a first date. I mean, <laughs> what would we have to do on our second date? Okay, but I really want to thank you for being so wonderful tonight. It's just been a joy. I really liked it. And if I gave you a little kiss right now, would anything happen to me? <laughs> well, you know, I'd probably feel like... Uh, like walking through a brick wall. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Good luck, Doug. Thank you, Sandy. And watch out, brick wall. Here I come. Now we have arrived at the moment of truth for Doug. Now, just to give you all a little background on this, I'd like Doug to tell you what's been going on over the past week or so. Thank you, Glenn. As you know, I've said many times that nothing is impossible, and this may really be my best opportunity to prove it. You know how people always refer to an impossible situation by saying it's like walking through, through a, brick a brick wall? wall yeah. Well, this is not like walking through a brick wall. This is exactly walking through a brick wall. And it's done being live with no camera trickery whatsoever. During the week, we've had a bona fide member of Local 2, the Bricklayers and Masons Union, constructing this solid brick wall using the actual techniques that are applied in the construction of any building or factory or wall. Now, he's been working in plain sight of everyone. Yeah, I know, and uh, he just completed the wall a short while ago, and I'd like you all to meet him right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jensen. Hey, guys. Hi, Mr. Jensen. Doug, hey, go ahead. Uh, are you... Doug is going to walk through your wall. Nobody is going to walk through this wall I just built. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jensen, I know you're sure I'm not going to walk through your wall, but we want to make sure the audience is sure, too. So are you absolutely certain that this wall that you built is absolutely solid? Yes. You are? Absolutely Good. Solid. And I want you to answer a few more questions. First, were you given any special instructions on how to build the wall by me or any member of my staff? No, I was just told to build a brick wall of these dimensions using acceptable construction techniques. And did you do that? Yes, sir, I did exactly that. Good. All right. So if it turns out I am able to walk through your eight and a half inch thick brick wall, would you be prepared to state that it was not because of anything special you did to the wall? It's a real solid factory wall. Yes, I would. Great. Now, I'd also like you and Glenn to examine the wall one more time and make absolutely certain that it's completely solid. This is the wall. You can hear it. It's 10 feet high, 10 feet wide, and it's eight and a half inches thick, and it actually weighs 7,000 pounds. We had to have a truck move it in here on stage. The bricks are very solid and they're filled in with cement mortar. There's not even a crack large enough for an ant to go through. Is this the same wall that you just finished building, Mr. Yes. Jensen? It is, good. And you've examined it completely and there's been no changes whatsoever. It's exactly as you built it. Correct, it's just as sturdy as ever. Good, now all this is very important and I thank you very much for coming over thank you, and telling us about your wall. Glenn, are you satisfied <laughs> that this is a solid brick wall? Okay, are you, you going to go through the wall right here? Yeah, I'm gonna go through right about right okay. there. Well, that's solid enough. <laughs> Terrific. I'll check. Now, okay. I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't mean to be skeptical or anything, but uh, could you go over there and come through the wall this way from the other side? Well, this is a left-handed wall and I'm right-handed, but I'll give it a try. Okay, good. I'll wait out here for about five minutes and then if you're not through it, uh, I'll get somebody from the, <laughs> the wall scrapers union to pull you out, all right? Okay. <laughs> now, it must be obvious to everyone watching tonight that there are only three possible ways for me to get to the other side of this brick wall. I can go under it, I can go over it, or I can go around it. I want to prove to you that I can't go under the wall. So I'm going to be standing on this 18 inch high table. It's 18 inches off the ground. To prove to you that I can't go around the wall, we're raising a solid three-sided transparent curtain. The curtain covers both the front and back approaches to the wall. If I were to try to go around either the front or the back, I'd have to step off the table and my feet would be clearly visible. And also, I'd probably leave a visible tear right in the curtain. Now, if I were to attempt to go over the wall to that table that you're seeing on your screen right now, it's pretty high and I'd be in plain sight of everyone. In fact, the wall is eight feet high and even the world's greatest high jumper could do it, I'd probably kill myself. So that only leaves one way to get to the wall on the other side to walk through the solid brick wall by magic. You're going to see my hands above this shade until the last moment before I go through the wall. And then you instantly see my hands on the other side of the wall. Watch now as I walk through a brick wall. This is 
been a magical evening for me in the truest sense of the word. There is real magic. It's all around us all the time. Magic is always and everywhere. And all you must do to experience it is open your mind and your heart. Then you can see the magic that life truly is. I'd like to leave you all with a little gift to thank you for watching. I'm planting a seed. Watch what happens. The seed grows just like a dream.